Hey guys, DMS here. Today we have the Aeon Noir versus the Aeon 2 Closed. Let's check it out. Now do me a favor, if you want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel and ask me questions directly, you can on the Telegram chat, or you can get active in the community on Hi-Fi Guides. So I haven't published reviews of either of these headphones and I figured the best way to tackle it would be to do a double review, a head-to-head -head with both of them. Now this was sent to me by a viewer, Serial, he's been a long time viewer of the channel. And this one was sent to me by a post Audio. I will have both of these headphones linked in the video description. Now when I got in this headphone, I didn't really know anything about the Noir, and I figured that it'd be really cool to compare the two because this one is supposedly a Harman tuned version of the Aeon 2 Closed. So I got it in. I've been using both of these for like a solid month now because I really wanted to dig in and compare as much as I could. And here's my overall thoughts. I'm wearing a jacket in here. I forgot to bring my space heater to the office today and it's a little bit chilly. So let me move these up here out of the way for just a moment. These have basically the same case, the texture, is slightly different on one than it is on the other. This is the one for the Aeon Noir, this is for the Aeon 2 Closed. I assume it's just a newer version of the same case. It has divots for these little yokes here and a pocket for the cable on both. It's a tight squeeze, but you can easily fit in the headphone and the cable. So these have the same connectors that the Ether C Flow 1.1 had. If you saw my review on that, um, I find these connectors kind of dumb, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why they use them. I mean, it works, it functions, but why not just use three and a half mil or a normal standard connector? It is what it is, it's a small complaint. I just find them to be a bit of a pain to connect sometimes. Other than that, the cable is fine. It makes it a little bit more difficult to get an aftermarket cable, but I, I'm not complaining about the stock cable too much. The build on both of these is basically the same. The only difference is really are the color and the pads. Uh, so let's talk about it on the regular Aeon 2 Close and I'll talk about the differences on the Noir. This has the same adjustment mechanism from the Ether C Flow 1.1. Only difference is you can't really tighten it and there's not a locking mechanism. So if this gets loose, uh, it can just kind of freely go up when you put it on your head, which has happened to me a few times with this. I'll put it on and one side will go up. It's not too bad, but that does seem to be something that will happen over time. That looks a little bit different on the Noir. You hold these up to the camera. You can see on the Noir that there's a slight spacing inside of that bracket. And the Noir seems to hold a little bit more firmly, so I assume this component has been updated. This is a very light and comfortable planar. I'm glad that the suspension strap does not let this metal touch my head. That's the biggest problem that I have with a lot of Odysseys is that their suspension straps just let the metal rest on my head and it always digs in unless I modify the headphone. And that isn't a problem on this. In fact, this is one of the most comfortable headphones on the planet. I'm very comfortable saying that this is one of the most comfortable headphones on the planet. I can wear these all day. No problems at all whatsoever. They do get a little bit warm after several hours, but it's a closed back headphone with leather pads. Up here where it's cold, a little bit of warmth isn't a bad thing. But I never really found them getting hot or sweaty. Now, the only real build difference is the Noir is black and there is a perforation right here on the inside of just the front of the pad. The back isn't perforated, neither is the top, but the front of the pad that goes towards the front of your ear is perforated. Now I have the white felt tuning inside here. Both the Aeon 2 Closed and the Aeon Noir come with multiple different options for damping that you can insert and I will talk about that in just a moment. I'm gonna put that back in there. And you'll notice that I have the same one here in the Aeon 2 Closed. Now, as far as pads go, there is a bit of inconsistency right here in the Noir, where it feels like the foam is slightly rotated inside of the leather, um, where you can see it bumps out just a little bit there, but it's not bad. Uh, I don't notice it comfort-wise, and I don't notice any difference ear-to-ear sound-wise. I imagine that's just a minor quality control thing. Sadly, these pads are glued on, so you're not really going to be changing out your pads unless you're willing to adhere on new ones. Not really a fan of that. Glue on pads are dumb, but it is a unique pad shape. It's not like you're gonna be pad rolling this headphone anyway. But yeah, build overall, I think that the build is pretty great. I think long-term your concerns are going to be that pads are gonna be a little bit harder to change. You don't have a locking mechanism on this, though it does feel pretty firm on this particular pair, uh, but that is a component that could wear out over time. These do fold up very nicely, so portability is a great 
plus with these. I mean, it is a closed back planar. Yeah, building comfort, very, very solid. Very, very solid. I like them quite a bit. Like I said, probably the most comfortable headphone that I've worn um, right there with the HD650 for me, only the HD650 has more clamp. So a lot of people will probably also find these more comfortable than the HD650. Let's talk about sound. So, as I said, I put the white felt damping pack that is included with both headphones into these. And that is because both of these were a little bit bright for my tastes. And this is coming from a person who likes things like the DT880 uh, and other headphones that many people would in some cases call bright. Let's start with the sound of the Aeon 2 Closed and then talk about the Aeon Noir. So the Aeon 2 Closed has very extended, strong sub bass. It's not muddy, but it is warm. The mid-range is very rich and textured, and the highs kind of recess a little bit, except for in one spot where they have a peak. And it's a bit of a narrow band peak. A lot of things don't bother me until you get to certain songs where the vocal falls into a specific bandwidth or songs that might have a similar hi-hat that just falls on that certain frequency, and it's a nail on the head. And I couldn't quite deal with that. That was a bit of a problem for me, and when I put in this uh, damping, it actually completely fixed that. Now, the headphone does now lean a little bit warmer and a little bit darker, uh, but it's still more of what I would call a slightly warm-leaning, neutral, if not mid-ranged, focused headphone, uh, which is interesting. It's hard to describe the tonality of this, but the warmth is slight, it's very pleasant. The bass is impactful, not as impactful as the Noir, but plenty impactful for a closed back headphone. You're not gonna get the same kind of slam that you do out of like an HE6 or an HE500 or something like that, but it's still pretty good. More than enough to satisfy um, a bass head or someone who likes some punch to their music. I'm really glad that the headphone doesn't ever get muddy, and the high frequencies do have a good bit of air to them. It extends well upwards, even though with the damping in, it brings the level of the treble down just a little bit. It never sounds muffled or veiled. Uh, now, some people do find the Aeon too close to sound uh, overdamped, and I can see that in a respect. It doesn't have the reverberative sound that many people are familiar with in a closed back, so that could sound overdamped. I wouldn't necessarily say that I feel like it's overdamped, but it does sound very reminiscent of what happens when you take something and you put it into a uh, overly treated room. A room that is not like an anechoic chamber or something, but reminiscent of those faculties. And saying that these do sound like they are not dead at all. I wouldn't say dead, but dry would be the proper term, I feel like. It is a uh, dry sounding stage to the headphone. But interestingly enough, the stage is wide and well presented. It's like trying to imagine the space of a uh, performance hall if that performance hall was very heavily acoustically treated with little reflections and little reverberation. A sound that is spacious, but also dry. It's very hard to imagine and you kind of have to listen to it to uh, to get what I'm saying. But I do find that sound pleasant. The staging is a bit reduced when I put in the damping, but it's still certainly acceptable, and I would take the trade-off of slightly reduced staging over having to deal with the narrowband treble peak. It's not a very in-your-head sound. It's definitely an out-of-your-head sound, and somewhere right out here, I feel like, is about where it caps off, with sometimes occasional sounds that go farther out. Uh, I'd say that depth is definitely above average for a closed back headphone. And while vocals never reach the in your head center sound, it's still very intimate and vocals can sound both delicate and close and are very, very distinguished and clear. And I'm very happy about that. This is a pretty detailed planar and it's able to do so without being overly harsh as long as you have the damping in. The detail and the soundstage are both held up by excellent imaging, not as excellent as some open back headphones like a PC38X or something like that, or maybe the 560S, but certainly very good imaging in the realm of closed backs, better imaging that I was getting out of the EtherC Flow, uh, better imaging than I would get out of the ZMF Icon. And now that we have a pretty good picture of this, 
I'd like to talk about the Aeon Noir and the differences between the two in sound. Now this is supposedly a Harman tuned version of the Aeon 2 Closed. Once again, I have the damping in here. I'll take that out for just a moment and we'll talk about this headphone. It is without a doubt more V-shaped than the Aeon 2 Closed, but it doesn't have that narrow band peak. The treble is all more elevated, but I feel as if the elevated treble is more level. There's more of it all coming up together rather than just a narrow peak, and that makes it significantly more tolerable. Though I do find it a bit bright still. And once again, I put in the level three, the white damping that is included with the Aeon Noir. Now when doing this, it brought the treble down just a little bit, right under the level of the Harman target, uh, with the exception of the upper treble, where it extends higher than Harman's target and gives the headphone a lot of air. Now, I have measured both of these headphones. I normally don't measure something before doing a review, but I already listened to them a ton, and I wanted to really have some data to compare on paper the differences between the two. And the difference is pretty clear. Now, in one set of graphs, I'm going to show you the headphones with no damping in them, just as they are the Aeon 2 Closed and the Aeon Noir. And then in another graph here, I'm going to show you the Aeon Noir and the Aeon 2 Closed with the white felt damping uh, in place in both headphones. And you can see where they sit. The bass on the Aeon Noir is insane. It's not irritating or bloated like I found the DT1770 to be. There's something about planar bass that is just more pleasant than bass in dynamics sometimes. And in this case specifically, I'm not much of a bass head. I really don't prefer elevated bass at all, but I found the bass in this headphone to be very pleasant because it was well refined. It certainly boosted bass. In fact, I would say this is probably one of the better headphones on the market for someone who loves bass. But even for people who don't love an emphasis on bass, this really, really punches hard in a way that isn't irritating, in a way that isn't bloated or muddy or distorted. It just sounds tight. It sounds reasonably, not, not insanely, but reasonably dynamic. I would say that dynamics is probably one of the weaker areas on this headphone compared to uh, some other open backs in its price bracket. But as a closed back, it is reasonably dynamic and I'm pretty happy with that. It's just a very comfortable, very immersive, plentifully detailed, and surprisingly impressive headphone. To the point where I've really been debating buying one of these, buying this one used from the person who sent it in or buying this one that a post sent over as a loaner for review. I think between the two, this is how they sound. I feel like the detail in the Aeon Noir is a little bit more readily accessible due to its presentation, even though I feel like detail-wise they both perform about the same. I feel like the sound staging is nearly identical, but a little bit wider on the Aeon 2 Closed. And I feel like the Aeon 2 Closed sounds a little bit more mid-ranged focus in comparison because the Noir has that emphasis on sub-bass and a little bit more elevated and rounded out uh, treble with that extra air on top. It was really hard to pick which one I like more between the two, but I think it's the Aeon Noir. I think the Aeon Noir really is my favorite between the two just because the bass performance in this is so unique. And with the white damping in here, it really does level out to a sound that I think is very, very pleasing in the treble. It doesn't leave anything to be desired. The absolute worst case scenario, I had some songs that I felt like could use a little bit more warmth, and those songs did perform a little bit better on the Aeon 2 Close with its additional kind of warmth in the lower mid-range, and its slightly more mid-focus sound than the Aeon Noir. But these are both great headphones. I have no problem recommending both of these, and I'm still really torn on which one I think that I'm going to get. If I can talk myself into getting one, I don't need to buy more headphones. I really don't need to buy more headphones. But this one really makes me want to buy another headphone. Mmm, I gotta pay for an office. I shouldn't buy more headphones. This would be the benchmark for me to compare all other clothes backs to. And really the benchmark for bass performance. I think that's a good way to put it. This headphone, both of these headphones, but this one specifically, the Noir, as long as you're using this damping, I think this might be my favorite closed back headphone currently. And I loved the icon, I loved the Verte closed with the micro suede pads on it, but I think I like the Aeon Noir more. And the Aeon 2 closed, 
comes very, very close. In fact, I'd say they're on a level playing field. It's just a slightly different tuning for a different target and a different listener. Either way, like I said, if you consider one of these headphones, I highly recommend using it with the white damping. That's what most of my evaluation is based on. And I think that is going to wrap this one up. Maybe I should check out more things from Dan Clark Audio, formerly Mr. Speakers. It takes me a little bit to get used to that new name because these ones really surprised me. So maybe some of the others will too. We'll see. Anyway, guys, I think that is going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below, a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next one, guys. Peace.